Hello, Facebook. It's an action-packed show this week on Gay USA. It sure is. Yeah. <laughs> are we going to talk? Are we going to talk about the uh, the, the update uh, the update on uh, the yeshiva thing? Uh, I don't know what the update is. So oh, the times, not... you know. What? It's kind of we've kind of covered it. Uh, the Times did a big story about it. We have to really escalate the noise we make so that we'll be heard. Welcome to Gay USA. I'm Andy Hum. I'm Ann Northrup. And we start with good news. Uh, big progressive wins in Wisconsin and Chicago. Uh, yeah, amazing. Uh, and President Bush was very outspoken. Well, Biden, Biden. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> Thank Start you. over. I said Bush. I meant Biden. President Biden is very outspoken in condemning the current wave of anti-trans youth laws that just keep coming. Uh, it would be nice if President Bush spoke out against them. Uh, a federal, <laughs> Maybe he will. A federal judge in Tennessee, appointed by Trump, paused the state ban on drag performances. But there's lots of bad news from Tennessee. Oh, yes, there is. Uh, and uh, But good news from, are you sitting down? Texas, an out federal judge there ruled that at least 12 books, 12 out of thousands, banned from public libraries have to be put back. Uh, Florida Governor DeSantis, uh, uh, his attempt to de-gay Disney is being, has been thwarted for the time being. Uh, one of the top three stories of the week. Can't wait to explain that. Uh, California leaders want the state to fight for liberal values in red states. Uh, the New York Police Department finally made arrests in the murders of New York gay bar patrons and a shocking story about one of the victims. Uh, this is the answer to everyone who says that uh, uh, D.A. Bragg should be going after crime in New York City. Uh, and the Department of Justice has arrested a 20-year-old neo-Nazi in Ohio who firebombed a church hosting a drag event. We mourn this week a pioneering Cuban-American lesbian activist in Philadelphia, a groundbreaking lesbian young adult novelist, a drag legend in San Francisco, and the bisexual man who was a muse for the Beatles. And an anti-LGBTQ Republican judge in Texas, yes, the same one who's been doing this for years, ruled that insurance companies nationwide are no longer required to cover many vital preventive services, including PrEP. That should not be allowed. Well, but, he should know, not be allowed. He should be impeached. That's, that can be our new crusade, impeach Reed O'Connor. Well, who's going to do it? Uh, the, we, you know, I, I went to the, uh, the demonstration outside the Manhattan criminal court where, where Trump was being indicted. Uh, it was where we had, we had more people than they did. He did not turn out his troops. Um, the only two members of Congress who showed up were Marjorie, for, for on his side were Marjorie Taylor Greene and George Santos. Uh, but you know, uh, if you watch these anti-Trump demos, uh, the signs are, are, are almost always made by Lori Ar Arbeiter uh, from Rise and Resist. And I, I, I saw her there and with all her signs and all her troops. And I, I asked her, why do you think it is that LGBTQ people who predominate in Rise and Resist are the key uh, players in this week after week uh, demonstrations against Trump and Fox News? When you have men like Trump unleashing hatred at a rapid pace, all of us are in danger. And I've come out in this world, and it was a long path I had to take to feel safe, secure, loved, free, bold, brave. 
and that is I can't stop there and I and I am really not there's no full liberation if somebody else is uh, uh, oppressed and Donald Trump has represented and manifested hatred and he's lied over and over and over again he um, pulls you know he gaslights people he um, tries to persuade his base to rise up in violence he actually does call for violence he manifests violence and it's against you know also people uh, he's a white supremacist so it's against black people and brown people he is a xenophobe it's against people trying to migrate which this country is 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 formed in its most beautiful spirit through migration he has also talked out and made fun of differently able people how dare he he's also talked and um, supported people that are against the human rights of trans people and right now the danger of our kids that are trans and our lives lived as trans and queer people is going like it's skyrocketing people are going to migrate across borders within the country to be safe and that's why we have to stand out we know we're we know about a long history of struggle. And I say we're in a liberation struggle to be free. We love Lori. Yeah. Well, I watched uh, from home because uh, I just couldn't bring myself to go down there. But I got to watch the whole motorcade through uh, Manhattan. It, it was very entertaining. I like to watch those things to see if I can identify the highways they're on. <laughs> <laughs> but he, man, he did not look happy. And uh, it really kind of hit me as he was walking into the building that here he was, uh, this uh, figure who had exuded so much uh, power and exercised so much power, walking into <laughs> the same courthouse I've walked into many times uh, to be arrested and arraigned. And it it really was a stunning image. Well, uh, again, we're not going to, you know, there's not another court date until January uh, on that case. We've got other indictments possibly coming up, but uh, it's going to be a bumpy year. It is, and I'm sure it will be unsatisfying in many ways, but it, it still was very, very striking to see him hauled into court. Well, let's talk about what we are happy about, uh, which is, what Wisconsin did, progressive jurist Janet Protasewicz uh, handily defeated the reactionary Daniel Kelly. I, I think it's, fifth, it's by 10 points at least. Uh, tipping the balance on the state's high court, lending hope to protecting reproductive rights, overturning the gerrymandered districts, and making sure that the 2024 elections will be fairer and maybe get some congressional maps redrawn that could give the U.S. House back to the Democrats. Um, this is the first time in 15 years that liberal judges will have control of that court. And, and her opponent, who was, who, as you say, was substantially defeated, he gave the worst uh, concession speech I've ever heard. In fact, he didn't concede because uh, he's, he's not buying it. But he talked about, he just slandered her from beginning to end. In he his... may end up in jail for his role in Wisconsin trying to put false electors on the, on the uh, ballot. Yes, but it was, it was shocking, shocking to hear what he had to say. And meanwhile, a trans woman was elected to the Common Council in Madison, Wisconsin. Uh, Dina... Dina Nina Martinez Rutherford. Yes. And she says, I, I want to point out, I am not uh, Latinx, even though I have Martinez in my name, but my hero and mentor uh, was uh, a trans woman named Martinez, and I incorporated her name into mine, and uh, I just want to show her enormous respect. And that's a trans woman breakthrough in uh, Wisconsin. Yes. And in Chicago, a uh, progressive teacher, and Cook County Commissioner Brandon Johnson was elected mayor over Paul Vallis, who was backed by the police unions. It was a very close race. 
uh, but a big another big win for progressive forces. And this guy is really a progressive. Uh, the out lesbian mayor, Lori Lightfoot, lost in the first round of voting, and Johnson takes office in May. Uh, yeah, he's quite impressive and very nuanced in his thinking and talks about coalition building and approaching uh, issues by bringing people together in a way that is convincing and that he is actually accomplished rather than just, uh, you know, boilerplate. Uh, in North Carolina, however, Charlotte Democrat Tricia Cotham is uh, switched to the Republican Party in the legislature, giving the Republicans a veto-proof majority in the, in the House there. Now they can further restrict abortion, LGBTQ rights, loosen gun safety laws, all issues that she ran on, that, uh, you know, on, on our side. Um, she was upset that she got criticized for using the American flag and praying hand emojis on social media on her vehicles. Uh, she, she represents a district that went for Biden by 20 points, and now she has two years to wreak havoc uh, uh, on Democratic Governor Roy Cooper. Uh, but it turns out that even if you do get elected, that is no guarantee that you are safe in your seat. A couple of stories. In Oklahoma first, we've told you about Representative Maury Turner, uh, uh, black, bisexual, uh, progressive, who, uh, much to our shock and amazement, was elected to the Oklahoma legislature last year, maybe, maybe the year before. Uh, so she is now under threat of being expelled from the legislature by the Republicans because they say she sheltered a transgender protester. Hold on, let me make sure I got this right. Uh, yes, in her office. And that is evidently uh, anathema to the Republicans in uh, Oklahoma. So they're gonna take a vote on throwing her out of the legislature. It, it, it makes no well, sense at all. As a, you know, Absolute power corrupts absolutely, and that's what Republicans have in many of these legislatures, and they are abusing their powers. And now, for a demonstration of that, we're going to talk about Tennessee. Uh, the House, the, you know, we talked last week about the uh, killings in Tennessee of the three nine-year-olds and three adults at the uh, Presbyterian school there. Uh, and so people in uh, Tennessee are up in arms, so to speak, about gun control because they want these AK or AR-15s uh, gotten rid of. So a thousand people went to the Tennessee legislature to protest. And you can see that many of them are young there. That's a Republican leader who is being escorted into the uh, chamber by a, a state patrol guy. Uh, but the children and their parents and family and friends were all out there protesting in the streets, in the halls of the building, all legally, all peacefully. They went through metal detectors to get into the gallery. Of what do you mean? You can't carry a gun into the legislature like everywhere else in Tennessee? Exactly. Uh, but they, they followed all the rules of not, you know, the, le the Republicans are claiming this was like the January 6th insurrection. They broke no windows. They carried no weapons. They attacked nobody. They did not burst into anything. They just went into the gallery where they got a little loud. And here's what happened. was that? That was the guy you saw on camera who was photographing yeah. with his phone. He turned around and clocked the guy who was filming him. <laughs> Just well, well, punch well, him. Not, of course, they're trying to expel what? Three members? Three. So what happened was you saw all the kids in the gallery 
who were screaming, if you couldn't understand it, fascists at the uh, legislatures mm -hmm. because three Democrats got up. They brought one of the protesters onto the floor to try to give her a chance to speak. Uh, and they stood there. <laughs> one of them had a bullhorn uh, trying to talk to the, uh, the legislature and the legislature was ruling them out of order. You cannot speak. You don't have the right. Get off of here. I have the conch. <laughs> and meanwhile, all the legislators are filming all of this, except one of them turns around and just slams the uh, Democrat who was taking pictures of it. So the three Democrats, two black men and one white woman who uh, had the temerity to want to speak up when they weren't being allowed to speak, uh, are now under threat of expulsion. Well, they've, already lost, they've already lost their committee assignments. Over. They've lost their committee assignments. Oh, by the way, the Oklahoma woman lost her committee assignments too. Uh, and now there are uh, resolutions on the floor of the Tennessee legislature to expel, expel these three Democrats. Well, I mean, look, I mean, people are talking to uh, uh, prosecutors around the country about arresting Biden for something, you know, because yes. Trump was arrested. So this is what's happening. The Civil War, ladies and gentlemen, never ended. But President Biden this week uh, did issue a proclamation uh, decrying attacks on trans youth. A wave of discriminatory state laws is targeting transgender youth, terrifying families and hurting kids who are not hurting anyone. And of course, families are having to, uh, as Lori Ar Arbeiter said, lead, emigrate over state lines just to maintain sanity and uh, health care and, and rights. Uh, and Biden uh, talked about the bravery of the kids and their families fighting back against these laws and was quite eloquent about that and, and about the cruelty of these laws and how horrible they are. And we do have, you know, uh, the American people on our side in many ways. And NPR, PBS News, Maris Paul. 58% oppose laws restricting drag performances, 39 support those laws, 57% of independents oppose, and 37% of Republicans, 54% uh, oppose laws banning gender-affirming care for minors. Uh, but opposition to that has risen from 28% uh, in April of 2021 to 43% today, so the other side is making some progress. 60% of parents with children under 18 um, support the bans, while about the same percentage of those without children oppose them. Uh, and there are more stories of people lying about uh, uh, transgender health clinics uh, and fight. There's a fight in Missouri between a mother and child. Mother claims the child was mistreated. The child says, no, I wasn't, and stop lying about it. Uh, uh, I think the lines are becoming clearer. The issues are becoming clearer. And when one week we have uh, fifth graders leading a school walkout in Indianapolis over these laws and, and then these kids in Tennessee fighting for gun control, uh, there really is energy on both sides. And I have some hope that, uh, you know, we, we win the elections in Wisconsin and Chicago. And, uh, and, and I, I think we will continue to win most elections. Well, we got to get rid of those. People. But again... The districts have been so gerrymandered, it's very hard to take power back. In Kentucky, they have a veto-proof majority there, and they overrode uh, uh, Democratic Governor Andy Beshear's veto of their sweeping anti-trans bill. Republicans have supermajorities in both chambers. It bans gender-affirming care for minors. Doctors now have to set a timeline for detransitioning children already taking puberty blockers or undergoing hormone therapy. It bans discussion of sexual orientation or gender identity at any age in schools, and it bans trans kids from using restrooms aligned with their gender identity. Um, and it lets teachers uh, refuse to use uh, preferred pronouns. Uh, Kentucky also enacted laws to cut health benefits under uh, Medicaid, uh, disempowering cities and unions, uh, except the police unions. Uh, the ACLU is going to sue over these laws to try to overturn them. Oh, we win these uh, lawsuits, too. Uh, but the fight is certainly going to be long and tough and complicated. But no one's giving up. 
uh, fighting these things. And uh, look, DeSantis is not winning any friends these days. And Florida has just criminalized all uh, medical care for trans youth, criminalized doctors and parents who support uh, medical care for their trans youth. And if you let uh, dra people in drag march in your pride parade, uh, you know, your, the city, uh, what are they going to do to the cities who do this? They're going to... Uh, well, they're going to make it illegal, so they will, uh, whatever they can do to cities, they will do. To stop it, yeah. It's unconstitutional. Yeah. And but Texas Republicans have just voted to end all gender-affirming care for anyone under 18. They're going to make people detransition, people who have already started puberty blockers or hormones. That's monstrous. But yeah. we didn't finish with the good news. In Tennessee, a Trump-approved federal judge, Thomas Parker, has paused uh, the new law restricting drag performances and put it on hold for at least 14 days from this past Friday. He said the statute is likely both vague and, uh, uh, and overly broad and that the state has failed to prove a compelling government interest in why it should regulate drag performances so severely. The bill uh, bans what it calls adult cabaret performances, including male or female impersonators on public property. Uh, the plaintiffs are Memphis based, uh, a Memphis based theater company, Friends of George's, which includes drag performances. Judge Parker said that the state lacked a clear answer to the purpose of the statute, considering that you've already got anti obscenity laws if they're doing something bad. So he's subjecting it to strict scrutiny under the First Amendment. And am I right to think he is a Trump appointed judge? Yes, 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 yes absolutely. I said that at the top. I missed that. Uh, and in Texas, another judge in Llano County uh, has ordered the county to put 12 books that were taken off the shelves of a public library back on the shelves. Uh, this is uh, out gay federal judge Robert Pittman. Yeah. Uh, and these are books having to do with sexual orientation and race. Uh, and he is an, uh, yes, out gay Obama appointed judge. He says the First Amendment prohibits the removal of books from libraries based on either viewpoint or content discrimination. He says, look, you can make all kinds of decisions about what books you're going to put in there, but if you're going to take them out based on viewpoint, that's not kosher. Uh, well, we're skipping around a little, but uh, back to uh, trans uh, issues. Uh, in the uh, U.S. Congress, Senator Ed Markey of Massachusetts and Representative Pramila Jayapal of Washington have introduced the Transgender Bill of Rights as a resolution. Uh, they have, uh, you know, uh, scores of co-sponsors uh, of this bill, but they are Democrats and there's no immediate thought that they're going to get this passed, but at least they're standing up and saying something. And meanwhile, the Department of Health and Human Services under Biden has issued a report on the uh, Trans Day of Visibility, moving beyond change efforts, uh, evidence and action to support and affirm LGBTQ plus youth. Um, uh, some that says they need some financial help and some mental health uh, help in the midst of a crisis. Uh, so if you're looking for some more facts and data, that would be the place to look. Well, California Governor Gavin Newsom is not giving up on the red states. He's announced a new campaign, uh, not for president, but going into the red states, meeting with students in Arkansas, fighting attacks by Governor Sanders and with liberal activists in Mississippi. He's called it, calling it the campaign for democracy, which is really completely under threat in this country. Uh, and to fight authoritarianism. He's using he's using ten million dollars in leftover campaign fund, funds for it. Our for our disgraced governor, uh, you know, Andrew Cuomo had eighteen million, and he's not using it for anything good. Well, some people are calling this Gavin Newsom's campaign for the presidency, uh, whatever. And they're also in California. Uh, moving to change their policy on, you know, they passed resolutions in the last few years about no state-sponsored travel, uh, you know, non-emergency uh, travel to states that are passing these laws. But since at this point, it's at least half the states in America 
right. they're figuring maybe they ought to switch to the approach Newsom is announcing of going and fighting in these states. Uh, but someone else suggested that perhaps California just can't afford to uh, ban travel to these states. Uh, their sports teams cannot uh, be boycotting all these well, states. Well, this change in policy was proposed by the out speaker pro tem of the state Senate, Tony Atkins. There she yeah. is. Um, and she wants to end the ban. Now, the assembly sponsors don't want to lift the ban, but Atkins wants a marketing campaign in the anti-LGBTQ states, encourage acceptance of the LGBTQ community. She's originally from Southwest Virginia, and she wants to speak to people's hearts and open their minds in these areas, which is the same as the mission of Gay USA. <laughs> I was going to say, don't we all? Well, I think I don't think we can go any further without talking about the DeSantis Disney uh, latest <laughs> amusing event. I'll I'll try to do this uh, briefly. All right. So uh, Florida passes the Don't Say Gay bill. Disney, under pressure from its employees, uh, speaks up and says, uh, "We don't like the Don't Say Gay bill." DeSantis says, "How dare you express an opinion, Disney?" <laughs> Uh, even though I'm the government and I'm not supposed to censor speech, we're taking away your control of your special district where you control all the utilities and development rights and everything else. And, uh, and we're going to give it back to the people of Florida. Well, then he realizes that that's going to cost the people of Florida uh, the responsibility to pay the billion dollar debt that Disney is uh, carrying. So he says, all right, instead of doing that, we're going to leave the responsibility for the utilities with Disney, but we're going to change the oversight board from a Disney controlled board to a me controlled board. And I'm going to appoint, you know, the pastor who said uh, uh, drinking water makes you gay and uh, another a bunch uh, somebody of from Moms for Liberty, I think. Yes. yes the yes. co-founder co of Moms for Liberty. Yes. A bunch right. of crazies. And so, they were still looking forward to he gaining <laughs> Disney and getting yes. all the gay characters out of the, you know. <laughs> Making it family friendly again. So, so they're going through the transition process. And just before they're about to take over, Disney says, excuse me, by the way, uh, our board that is about to go out of business passed a, a new uh, law a couple of weeks ago that says uh, that we will retain the rights to control development in this area in perpetuity. No, and no, 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 no. Just until 21 years after the last survivor. You, you're stealing my line. Well, How you said dare perpetuity. You? How dare you, big you said in perpetuity. It's not perpetuity. You cut me off halfway through with a sentence. I was about I, to get to that. Sorry. I hate you. You said perpetuity. And was still speaking when you cut me off. Okay. So sorry, at any rate, <laughs> stop it. So, uh, so they retain uh, the rights in perpetuity, or if that's ruled illegal, until the death of the last descendant of King Charles III. Wow. Uh, so now DeSantis is freaking out about this. Uh, how dare they take this power away from him? And he's hired four law firms to fight this. Uh, and There's tax dollars at work. He's going to cost the taxpayers more in hiring the law firms than paying off the billion dollar debt would have cost. Right. Uh, but Disney has, everyone is laughing hilariously, hysterically over the fact that uh, Mickey Mouse has beaten DeSantis. Well, Bob Iger, who's the new CEO of Disney. Uh, Once and uh, future. He publicly called DeSantis anti-business and anti-Florida. Um, oh, by the way, there are Democrats in 50 counties calling to ban DeSantis's book from libraries for repeatedly talking about divisive concepts like gender identity, which he incessantly mentions in his books. All right. All right. Texas is moving a bill to post the Ten Commandments at every school. Uh, let's go to... Well, University of Wyoming, seven sorority sisters at Kappa Kappa Gamma are suing to challenge the uh, induction of a transgender member. They claim it violates the sorority's bylaws that state it's a single gender organization. They want to avoid the trans woman's membership and recover damages. 
CAPA uh, nationally says it does not discriminate based on gender identity. Uh, yeah, the, the plaintiffs are also charging that this particular trans woman is really not so trans and maybe, uh, uh, you know, a creepy person who's there to, uh, to exercise lascivious uh, interest. Uh, we're not there. We don't know. Uh, New Jersey Governor Phil Murphy signed an executive order making New Jersey a safe haven for gender affirming care as access is ending or threatened in red states. He directed all departments and agencies to protect all persons, patients, and healthcare professionals against repercussions uh, from providing, receiving, seeking, or traveling to New Jersey to receive gender affirming healthcare services. In Charleston County, South Carolina, the school board. Uh, has asked uh, Ed Kelly to resign. Uh, he's the one on the right there with the dark hair. I, I think he has resigned, hasn't he, by now? Uh, no, no. He, he's, he, uh, a teacher in, the, in one of the schools came out as trans, and uh, one of the kids, uh, he, this guy on the school board was talking to a parent of a kid in that trans teacher's class, and this guy, Kelly, said that if uh, one of his kids' teachers came out as trans, he would take a gun to the school and shoot that trans person. And he said this at a meeting of Moms for Liberty. Uh, meanwhile, the trans teacher was suspended uh, for coming out. I think uh, they say they're going through a process of uh, evaluating uh, the teacher uh, and the board is considering a policy of banning teachers from talking about with students about sexual orientation or gender identity. Yes. Uh, and by the way, did we mention that Florida is enacting a six-week abortion ban from 15? Oh, yes, that too. That's not going to help uh, DeSantis's presidential campaign. I, none of this is helping DeSantis's uh, presidential campaign. He's sinking like a rock. Uh, and I, I do not expect him to uh, suddenly become popular again. I think that was a very brief uh, period that he had of any popularity. People thought, oh, he's a tough guy and he's smart. Well, he's not smart and he's a bully. Mississippi passed a bill for a white takeover of predominantly Black Jackson, the state capital. The state will control the police and the appointment of judges democracy. And it's happening in other red states as well. In North Dakota, the governor uh, uh, vetoed an anti-trans uh, bill having to do with uh, school issues, you know, bathrooms, sports, that kind of stuff, uh, saying that uh, the teaching, oh, and pronouns, the teaching profession is challenging enough without the heavy hand of state government forcing teachers to uh, to take on the role of pronoun police. But meanwhile, the Republicans in the state legislature have just passed 10 more bills uh, that are anti-trans youth in the schools. In Ohio, the Justice Department arrested a 20-year-old man who sought to burn down the community church in Chesterland uh, for planning to host two drag shows. His name is Eamon Penny. Uh, he used Molotov cocktails to attach, attack the church on March 25th. He's part of a White Lives Matter group espousing racist uh, and homophobic views, uh, pro-Nazi. He uh, previously uh, shown up in Wadsworth to protest a drag event with swastikas and yelling homophobic slurs. What a guy. Yeah, real charmer. Uh, but better news in New York, where we've been following the cases of gay men coming out of bars and uh, seemingly drugged and killed, certainly robbed. Uh, the thieves and murderers were uh, taking the iPhones or the, the cell phones of these guys. And when they were unconscious, using facial recognition on the iPhones to get into the phones and take their money. Turn off the facial recognition, everybody. Please. And you shouldn't be going alone to these places. You should uh, be going with a friend. Uh, protect yourself. Anyway, uh, they've been looking for these uh, people who are attacking them. 
And well, we should show the two of the dead people. Julio yes. Ramirez there with his mother. He was drugged to death on April 21st uh, last year, leaving the Ritz bar in Hell's Kitchen, robbed of $20,000 and left to die in a taxi. The other one is John Umberger with his mom, Linda Cur uh, Clary, found dead June 1st. Now, we didn't report this yet. It's been in the papers. At the townhouse of Trump lawyer Jay Seculo, um, his boss at the right-wing American Center for Law and Justice, an anti-LGBTQ hate group. Uh, Elmberger left the Q Club uh, on May 28th with uh, two unidentified men who robbed him of $25,000 and apparently went to the Seculo mansion. Uh, and of course, the other big news is that uh, uh, police ID, the big news is that the police ID'd three suspects in these drug murders. Uh, Jacob Barrasso, uh, Jaquan Hamilton, he's still at large, and Robert DeMeo, 34. They're all in their 30s. Um, police only last month ruled, ruled these deaths uh, homicides. But they have arrested two of them, and they arrested one other guy in another murder similar. Uh, so for those who, uh, like Marjorie Taylor Greene, who go around saying D.A. Bragg should be uh, chasing the real criminals and not Donald Trump, he is chasing the real criminals. And you can chew and gum and walk at the same time. Now, the murder of John Umberger, of course, is an outrage. Uh, uh, he, but I was, I was shocked to learn he was director of diplomacy and political programs at this right wing legal group where he seemed to be directly responsible for um, uh, funneling resources to Ugandans pushing the kill the gays bill uh, that was just passed, which is one of their central concerns, endangering the lives of LGBTQ people across the globe. Um, it's does, shocking. Does the name uh, Ken Melman uh, ring a bell? Well, but this is, I mean, uh, yeah, yes, but uh, Ken Melman, who supported the uh, who opposed same-sex marriage in the Bush campaign. But uh, this is like Uganda. <laughs> certainly, certainly a few degrees higher. But my point simply being that there are, we really are everywhere. And that includes in right-wing organizations. Well, uh, speaking of criminals, George Santos uh, promised in his camp. I remember him promising. I saw it on TV. He promised to support the Equality Act. Now he's attacking Biden for supporting that act and not his bill to promote U.S. fund to prohibit U.S. funding to countries that discriminate and criminalize on, the, on sexual orientation, pointedly leaving out gender identity. And he's also a sponsor of the Orwellian Republican Women's Bill of Rights that is full of stereotypes about transgender people. And it's just, he just gets worse every day. Uh, in well, he has a Republican. He has a Republican challenger now. He's not going to get reelected. I, mean. I should hope not, but uh, stranger things have happened. Uh, in Back to New York City, a Staten Island man, uh, 33 years old, has been sentenced to two to four years in prison for a violent homophobic assault last year of two men in Brooklyn. Uh, he, you know, it starts with all this, get out of this neighborhood and, uh, and turn violent. And he's now been been sentenced to jail. Should, should we talk about the people that we've lost this past week? Uh, before I think we want to talk about Leslie Stahl for a minute first. Oh, uh, I had her later, but... Uh, oh, yes, we do. You're right. Go ahead. So Leslie Stahl, longtime uh, 60 Minutes correspondent, books an interview with Marjorie Taylor Greene. I'm sure thinking that she's just going to expose Marjorie Taylor Greene but of course, Marjorie Taylor Greene got the best of her because 60 Minutes has not done real journalism since, uh, you know, uh, Mike Wallace was uh, confronting people and ambushing them. It's been many decades since 60 Minutes has done uh, substantial stuff. And Marjorie Taylor Greene walks all over Leslie Stahl. She calls uh, Biden a pedophile and a groomer. All Democrats are pedophiles and groomers. And what and does Leslie say? Put that picture up. She says, wow, okay. <laughs> <laughs> really? You? Uh, but that's not true. They, they're no, no, at, no. When, at the final sign-off was not, you're out of your mind. It's <laughs> absolute, or just come on afterwards and say, they are not, you know, uh, or something. Yes. Could, could we? 
no could we follow. define what a pedophile is? <laughs> and Marjorie is very pleased with the interview. Of course. It's going to be Trump's running mate next year. Well, I I don't know if I would say that. Maybe Secretary of State. Running mate. <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, those darned heterosexuals, the Antichrist, Rupert Murdoch, will not go through with his fifth marriage uh, to the thrice married Christian pastor and Leslie Smith, Phew! who called it off. Uh, these are the people who peddle family values to the suckers in order to keep their taxes low. Well, he decided she was too uh, religious. Reba McIntyre says she doesn't do politics, was nevertheless critical of Tennessee's ban on drag. We've got real problems in this country, she said. And to be worrying about men wanting to dress up as women, God bless them to wear those high heels. I feel for them. <laughs> exactly. Uh, and uh, meanwhile, the uh, right wing in the person of the Alliance Defending Freedom, our old right wing legal friends, and a licensed uh, conversion therapy counselor in the state of Washington have petitioned the Supreme Court to ask them to end bans on conversion therapy on the grounds that they have free speech rights and religious freedom. The whole point of uh, these counselors is they are licensed to uh, provide good treatment. And if the state decides that they are providing treatment that is harmful, they can ban this uh, bad treatment. Right. So I don't think they're going to get very far. Even Shall, with we, this shall we hold Daniel Radcliffe for the end if we have time? Sure. Okay. He, he's teaming up with the Trevor Project. And uh, we're going to link to that. But if we have time, we'll run it. All right. Some so, some of the people we've lost? Yes. Well, uh, in, in Wheat Ridge, Colorado, uh, Julianne Peters, 71 years old, on the left there in this picture, uh, with her wife, uh, Sherry Leggett, on the right. They were together for 40 years. Uh, Julianne Peters was a lesbian author who started writing lesbian stories about 20 years ago, including Keeping You a Secret, which became a huge bestseller, uh, and Luna, a year later, which was the first uh, young adult novel to include a trans teen, uh, a, a trans girl. Uh, she got a huge, huge reader reaction, which embarrassed her. She uh, she said, I should have written these books a lot sooner. I, I am embarrassed that it took me this long. But she was a very seminal, uh, almost uh, not quite at Judy Bloom's level, but the same kind of uh, uh, response from readers and importance. Her books help save lives, young lives, and which is why the fascists want to ban them now. And uh, isn't Luna being made into a movie or a TV series or something? Maybe it was a finalist for the National Book Award. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, Ada Bello, or Ada Bello, a pioneering Philadelphia lesbian activist who emigrated from Cuba in 1958, has died at 89. She founded Philadelphia's chapter of the Daughters of Belitis in 1967 before Stonewall and the Homophile Action League in 1968. Her activism was sparked by a police raid on a lesbian bar in Philadelphia, Rusty's, where 12 women were arrested. Uh, also an organizer of the Philadelphia Gay Pride Parade in 72 and 73 with our friend Mark Siegel and John Cunningham and MCC, aided LGBT Cuban refugees in the 1980 Mario boat lift, as we did here in New York. Um, she was, and she worked with Barbara Giddings uh, at the at the American Library Association, the great lesbian activist, and helped found the LGBTQ Elder Initiative in 2010. Uh, she was one of those in the original marches in Philadelphia that preceded the Stonewall Rebellion. Uh, and in uh, uh, died in London, but uh, mostly lived in San Francisco. Uh, drag star. Uh, Hecklina, 54 years old. She's on the right there. In this was a group that did a sort of drag version of the Golden Girls. So she's there uh, uh, in that group. But she was mostly a an individual performer. Uh, she was uh, a leader of the community in San Francisco, uh, referred to as uh, uh, Mommy Queerist. Uh, she founded a drag show uh, called Mother in the 90s, very political uh, and a real hero in the community in San Francisco. She also worked with Margaret Cho and the Go-Go's musician, Jane Whiteland. 
All right, international news? Yes. Uh, in Iran. One of the two women who was sentenced to death for promoting homosexuality, Elham uh, Cholidbar, I have a picture of her, uh, was released from custody after her bail of $24,000 was paid. Uh, she was arrested in 2021 with, and we'll show her, Sarah Sedig Hamadani on charges of corruption on earth, promoting homosexuality and depravity, um, as well as, wait for it, promoting Christianity. In well, January, the it's death Iran. sentence. What? It's Iran. Yeah, in Christ January, the death sentence was overturned, uh, but the her uh, her you know, co-conspirator could not post bail. Yeah, so only one out at the moment. Uh, in uh, 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 the in the UK, Swim England, the organization that controls swimming in England, uh, has barred uh, trans women and non-binary. Uh, people, uh, non-binary people assigned male at birth uh, from competitions, uh, uh, from finals competitions, female, sorry, my own handwriting, uh, female competitions. They say that uh, male puberty, going through male puberty, even if ameliorated by hormones later for as part of a transition, still gives too much of an advantage to trans women uh, or non-binary uh, people. So they have been ruled out of uh, certain competitions. Open, they're now going to have female categories and open categories that are available to anyone. And they're gonna be variable again across different competitions. But they're, this, is, this is gonna become a new thing uh, for how to deal with uh, trans people in sports in international competitions. Well, speaking of Britain, the British beat poet Royston Ellis, uh, the bisexual who influenced the Beatles in many ways, has died at 82 in Sri Lanka. He was an accomplished young poet when he met the boys in Liverpool in 1960, doing readings in conjunction with their gigs. Uh, they were said to soak up his views on poetry, music, and sex, and that his homoerotic themes were eye-opening for them. Uh, he told them about the gay subculture in Soho in London and that one in four men was gay. He, uh, McCartney then said, we looked at each other, we looked each other over and wondered which one of us was. Ellis said he persuaded the boys to change the spelling from B-E-E-T-L-E-S to Beatles, as we know them, in honor of the Beat Poets. Uh, as a writer, uh, he was a writer of paperback books and the inspiration for their hit, Paperback Writer. Oh, God. <laughs> Don't do that again. Okay. And I won't interrupt you. Thank you. In perpetuity. <laughs> or until the death of the last descendant of Charles III. All right. Uh, AIDS news. Well, uh, I was going to say just one more thing. Under pressure from indigenous groups, the Vatican has repudiated the Catholic Church's doctrine of discovery from the 15th century that European powers used to colonize and exploit indigenous lands in Africa and the Americas. Now, if they would only listen to us and repudiate their heinous teachings on homosexuality and transgender. Mm. Uh, the New York City Department of Health uh, has reported on uh, sexually transmitted infections uh, in the year from 2020 to 2021. Uh, chlamydia is up, especially among men and young trans uh, women. Uh, syphilis is down in men, but up in women. Uh, they are repurposing clinics from COVID to uh, doing quick uh, sexually transmitted infections testing. Uh, so that is still a large focus, and we might be able to affect testing faster. And the City Department of Health also issued an advisory. You shouldn't have to be told this. Never drink poppers. <laughs> uh, though they weren't uh, going after their wide use as an inhalant used for enhancing sexual pleasure, uh, the department warns ingestion can cause hospitalization and death. And the FDA warns that the little bottles can resemble energy shots. So be careful. Listen. 
sit yourself down and have a little talk with yourself about your lifestyle. <laughs> there are a lot of dangerous things you're all doing. And do you really want to do that? Just a thought. Well, speaking of danger, the, the frightening ruling from Texas affecting us all. Reed O'Connor, famous homophobic uh, right-wing judge, appointed by, by uh, Bush, by the way, uh, the, uh, Bush Jr., uh, he, he tried to kill Obamacare but was overruled by the Supreme Court. Now he says that preventive health care services mandated by Obamacare are unconstitutional. Uh, meaning, if upheld, that vital things like PrEP, screenings for adolescent depression, uh, unhealthful drug use, and more, affecting 150 mil million Americans, are no longer have to be covered by insurance companies. Now, they, do they are still covered by Medicare and Medicaid, but uh, you know he ruled that employers and individuals uh, had standing to sue uh, because compulsory coverage for those services violates their religious beliefs by making them complicit in uh, facilitating homosexual behavior, drug use, and sexual activity outside of marriage between one man and one woman. Adam and, and this, this includes screenings, preventive screenings across the board. This includes cancer screenings, sexually transmitted infection screenings, uh, behavioral counseling. This is the guy who... Uh, Everybody goes to, the right wing goes to, uh, when they want a ruling like this, and he makes it a ruling that covers the entire country. Now, we did a little of that, you know, under Trump with some of the immigration stuff. But I mean, I think it actually, I mean, they've got to move faster on reviewing these things. Uh, uh, in New York, there's still a fight going on with the, the governor over her proposal to change uh, funding of uh, drug uh, reimbursements and and some of that money was going to community organizations and she wants to stop that and have those funds go to the state and so now housing works Callan Lord Harlem United and the Alliance for Positive Change are not going to march in the New York City Pride Parade if she is there uh, and uh, the Juneteenth Parade has already disinvited her over these issues. By the way, by way of information in terms of Judge O'Connor's ruling, it won't affect access to contraception and vaccines covered under a different part of the, of the uh, Obamacare. It won't affect those on Medicaid or Medicare. Insurers say there's gonna, gonna be no immediate disruption of services because the policies typically span a full year. But if a stay of the injunction is issued uh, the case could take years to resolve. And if not, it'll be full speed to the Supreme Court. And this, uh, his ruling does not prevent coverage of these things. It simply says that they, uh, coverage is not mandatory. So insurance companies could choose to continue to cover these things. So if your insurance company uh, looks like it's not going to, you might want to have a few words with them. Okay. Entertainment news? Yes. Justin Lance Black is uh, apparently enough recovered from his head injury to be working on a Broadway musical. He assured Michael Musto that it will not be Milk, the musical, but um, there's already an opera about that. Uh, and big news from Ted Lasso, now in its third season, uh, currently airing. Big shock last week as one of the uh, stars of Ted's team, Colin, there on the right, has a boyfriend. Right. They're not talking about it, but that's what's going on on Ted Lasso. I'm uh, seeing the Pulitzer Prize winning Fat Ham on Broadway on the 16th, and I'm excited to hear that Coleman Domingo has joined the cast. Nice. Why don't you tell us about the plays you have seen? All right. The, uh, well, uh, we're skipping over the, the fashion thing of, in order. Should we do that? Uh, I think you have dancing first. No. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Did uh, oh, there was something I had earlier? Trans Mac fashion brand. Oh yes. Both and is running ads with trans masculine models, mimicking the iconic Calvin Clyde ads from the 1990s that featured Marky Mark and Kate Moss. Uh, they'll be on billboards in New York, London, and Paris, and in print. The brand's mission is to empower, outfit, and serve the non-binary generation one garment at a time. All right. So the shows I saw. Bob Fosse's Dancing is on Broadway, an update of the 1978 dance review by the legendary choreographer himself. 
as they um, as they say from curtain up, there is no story to this musical, just imaginative dance numbers by a diverse cast, including some same sex and trans numbers. That's Joe Van Dansbury there, um, cut in the rug. Uh, and B Bill Bauman and I saw The Life of Pi based on the book that was a hit movie also. Some amazing stagecraft as young Pi survives in a lifeboat after the ship pairing his family and their two hundred and their zoo from India is swept away at sea. Hiran Abe Sarah is a sensational actor as Pi, funny, acrobatic, and moving as he spars with the elements and a Bengal tiger in his lifeboat, manipulated by master puppeteers. Uh and this is your last. Wait, did you did you like dancing or not? I, I did. I mean, it's, I'm, I'm not. A, I mean, I don't go out of my way for just the dance, but it was it's definitely entertaining. And you like pie? Yes, I did. Okay. I, I was the, the special effects there are terrific. Uh, okay, on to uh, rough trade. It's your last chance to see a new play by uh, Keb Berry, Rough Trade, at the Tank Theater off off Broadway. It was recommended to me by um, Professor Art Leonard and Goosa viewer Shep Wannan. So I'm seeing it before it closes uh, on uh, Saturday night. And, and it's about the challenges faced by gay millennials in New York. And it got a rave review from Gay City News. Okay. And uh, Netflix is dropping a new series on April 7th, Transatlantic, about Varian Fry. Varian is the second from the, uh, uh, the right there. An American who worked in Marseille, France in 1940 to save people persecuted by the Nazis based on a novelization of the story, but the creators do deal with Fry's homosexuality. Now, the author of a book on Fry calls that a travesty, but Fry's son told the New York Times, my father was indeed a closeted homosexual. <laughs> the wartime hero there is played by Corey Michael Smith. Oh, and I'm seeing Peter Pan goes wrong at the Barrymore Theater on April 20th and happy to see that Neil Patrick Harris is joining the cast from April 11th through the 30th. All right. Shall we uh, show them a little bit of uh, uh, Daniel Radcliffe did a video with talking to some trans kids uh, for the Trevor Project. Uh, we're going to show you a little bit. We'll go out with that. Hi, I'm Dan Radcliffe. Um, this week, I was incredibly fortunate to get to meet six young people who uh, agreed to come and share their stories with us, and also to have a conversation about allyship and, and the people in their lives who have shown up for them and made a positive impact on, on their lives and their journeys. So yeah, I'm excited to share that conversation with you. All right, everyone settle. Everybody set? Set. And action. Thank you so much for, for being here today. I would love to talk to you all if you're, depending on how much you want to say, but like, I'd love to know about all your journeys on like discovering who you are. And, and I'd also like to talk about some people in your life that may have helped or, or that you see as an ally in some way. If any, like, could I ask you? Is, yeah. is that throwing you into it too much? Or, but like, could you talk to me about like your, how you came to like understand who you are? And, or if you, mm. I w even feel weird asking that because like, I never had to, like, it might have been something you always known. Yeah, I definitely did always know. I'd say by the time I was, like, 14, I had came out as, like, openly gay. But I was just like, I mean, I didn't know trans was a thing until I was, like, really, like, 15 or 16. Right. So it was like, I, that was the term that I thought to use to describe myself because it fit best for, like, the position I was in in the world, you know? Very similarly to what you said, like, I grew into myself as a woman and I accepted that this is just who I am, and I came out as gay. And that was really hard because I just didn't have the words to say. I didn't know what trans was. I didn't, I didn't know that that was allowed. Yeah, and this is the thing, it's like both with language and with like representation in the media, then people like us, we don't see ourselves described in the yeah. media. And that means we think that we shouldn't exist or we don't have the language to understand how we exist. And